let's talk about health, spirituality, and food. So when we think about healthy food, that can bring up many images about, let's say, quality preparation, quality ingredients. This meal, for example, is consists of spring water, coconut oil, which is a healthy fat, multiple spices like turmeric, which has cucurminoids that are activated in conjunction with either black pepper and or fenuk Greek. You have black lentils, which has a higher abundance of protein, especially in the sprouted form, and you have higher vitamins. These are sprouted chickpeas, and so like sprouted lentils, it's a low-calorie version of the beans, and you're going to have vitamin C, folate, which facilitates iron production, potassium, which is good for the heart and muscles. You will also get magnesium, and if you add nuts or rice, in this case we have rice, you get a more complete protein profile without the insulin spike, right, from the beans because when your beans are sprouted they have a lower glycemic index and so when we add to a dish like this cabbage which is the number one vegan anti-inflammatory ingredient that also helps with digestion you bring along with that green onions which is high in vitamin K and vitamin C and you see that you have power greens. I got my power greens from Walmart in this case. And one of the constituent elements is chard, which helps with glucose balance. So there's a lot to suggest in a meal like this in terms of health, at least on the surface. But there's a catch. The catch is that if the body is unable to digest a meal like this properly, then it is all for nothing. And so how do we get there? Well, one of the ways that we get there is that we focus more on the digestion than we do the food. I'm not here to advocate for veganism or carnivorism or vegetarianism or anything like that. I chose veganism for my own purposes, for my own ideology, philosophy, you name it. But what I do advocate for is proper digestion, no matter what you eat or how you eat, right? And when I say how you eat, I mean do you, what diet you choose. The way you digest your food is the number one thing to focus on in health. Wayne B. Chandler is featured in a video titled Soul Star Activation. Wayne B. Chandler in his video Soul Star Activation. Basically, if you fast forward that video 46 minutes in, at minute 46, he breaks down digestion and energy and does it in such a wonderful and succinct way. And I highly recommend Wayne B. Chandler. I read his book Ancient Future twice. He published his book, Ancient Future, in the year 2000. And Wayne B. Chandler was able to connect, for me, all the dots of spirituality. Connect all the dots, every last one of them. And so, I haven't found a better book on spirituality than Wayne B. Chandler's Ancient Future. And I was pleased to hear that he is going to come out with a second book that is going to be absolutely phenomenal based on the title that he, he described. And you'll have to watch Soul Star Activation in order to get that re revelation. But the thing is, is that how you sleep affects your digestion, right? It affects your energy. If you sleep on the right side of your body or flat on your back, that's better in general than sleeping on the left side of your body. And Wayne B. Chandler explains that in the video, Soul Star Activation. But what I want to emphasize is electrical foods. Dr. Sebi, that many know about, did a great job in moving the process forward in bringing awareness to this concept of electrical foods. And it's a valid concept. And yet since that time, what we see is that the idea of energy, frequency, and vibration is a much broader concept, okay? 
And so what it means is that, and I learned this firsthand, is that your body can generate energy and it can do so without solid food. And this latest fast that I went on for 30 days, I have to report that after breaking that fast after 30 days of not eating food and going without food for 30 days, I have to say that I feel like many days I have less energy eating food than I did when I didn't eat any food. Because my practices during the fast where it was just liquids and I used a certain protocol to engage my system with those liquids such as spring water, in some cases distilled water, teas that were formulated a certain way, coconut water, coconut milk. Those liquids and the way I used them and put them into practice during a 30-day fast, I had a much more energy in many areas of my life and the way I moved than I seem to have in some cases now. And some would say that it's still an adjustment going from 30 days, a whole month without food to going back to food. But Wayne Chandler's breakdown was very impactful and it was very relevant in that if the digestive process of how the food gets transformed has barriers and blockages and you don't have an energy management process, right, then you're going to be out of alignment when it comes to using food. And it was like, what is the real reason why you eat food? And the, the reason you eat food is for energy, right? But if you're able to manifest and manage energy independently of food, then what that means is, number one, you need less food. You don't have to eat large meals. Number two, the type of meals you put together, if you can formulate them for maximum energy as opposed to taste and texture, which I'll admit is one of my failings, I do tend to still look at taste and texture. But the priority in eating and the priority in cultivating food, it definitely has to be about the actual nutritional constituents of the food and the meal should be prepared in such a way where the body's just going to digest it so easily and not have a lot of trouble moving that food through the system. And sometimes that means going with a food concoction that looks more like Indian chana masala or sambar spade, uh, spelled S-A-M-B-A-R. Something like that, right? Now, let's talk about spirituality. Spirituality is about the whole being. If we want the definition of spirituality, it's about the whole being. That's it. And the evolution of that whole being. So when we talk about consciousness and frequency and vibration, those seem like far off concepts, right? But when we reveal that the day-to-day -day life that we live in, taxes, paying bills, going to work, going to different events in the ordinary life, living on earth, being part of a government, being part of a society, all those things are part of spirituality. It's just simply that we want to compartmentalize and separate things out when really everything is an intertwined whole. And in the middle of that is our own will and consciousness and decisions. And when we can channel that in a very efficient way, we end up with a more effortless way of eating, an effortless way of health, an effortless way of going about our existence. And so I hope you found this well and informative, and I will catch you on the other side. And so if you need more information about anything I said here, drop a comment and I will get back to you and we'll uh, chat later. See you soon.